guys welcome back to my channel well what I have for you today is I want to make something that I saw in an antique store um, and it was so cute and you could you could transform these into candle holders if you wanted but this was really like vases made out of wood I think it's so cute so let me show you how I had my husband make these and then we're going to get those molds out and paint. And we're going to be using some Finnerbar waxes. I've never tried before, so we'll see what I think of it. I think we're really going to like them, though. Now, I do want to let you know that on Tuesday, I will be uploading the fairy garden from the Dollar Tree that I want to make. Um, I still haven't found what I want, but I can't wait forever looking for it. So I'm going to take what I have and try to mix it together and make a cute fairy garden next Tuesday, okay? So let me show you what you'll need in case you want to make this project, all right? Now we have tons of wood laying around and thank goodness we do because it is pricey. You could take those Dollar Tree boards and cut it down and still get you the same look. But I want to do something else with those, okay? So he just cut two pieces of board front and back and it's whatever size you want. I wanted them to be four inches and then he cut a little center piece on each side that's two and a half inches. And he just put a little bottom on it and it leaves you with this empty cavity down in here, all right? So I had him make this one, I think it's like 11 and a little over 11 inches, and this one is 16 inches, all right? Like I said, you could adapt these as candle holders if you wanted, but I wanted to put like either flowers or greenery in them, all right? I think this is gonna be so cute. Then we're going to use our Waverly Chalk Paint in Truffle. I've used this so many times and I love it. Um, and then I may be adding the Folk Art Metallic Antique Gold. I may be doing the Folk Art Metallic Royal Gold. And I may be using the Folk Art Metallic Chocolate Brown. I'm obsessed with that stuff, all right? For your molds, you're gonna need some cornstarch. I'm going to be using some baking soda in my paint this time to give it almost like a plastery effect, but that's totally optional. I'm going to be going back to my IOD air dry clay because that Daz was just driving me insane. My brush that I absolutely love and then I'm going to use my Classic Elements Mold, all right? So I think, oh, and the Tight Bond Original Glue cannot speak highly enough of this, all right? So let me get everything flipped down and we'll get started with this adorable, this could be how, you, depending on how you paint it, it could be farmhouse, it could be French country, or it could even be Tuscan. Who knows? Mine may be all three. I don't know. Let's get started. All right, I'm just going to take my Waverly chalk paint in truffle. Love this. And I'm just going to pour some out in my bowl. I'm not going to put a whole lot at first. Then I'm going to take my baking soda. And I usually just eyeball how much I think I want to give it the texture that I want. And then I'm just going to take a craft stick. Just be careful when you're using um, the baking soda with your molds that if you get it real exceptionally thick, sometimes it can try to fill in the dimension of your molds. Just keep that in mind. I think I'm going to put a little bit more. Okay, I like that really well. I'm going to take my brush. Just get it off of here. All right, we'll just start with the smaller one. But you could really paint these any color that you wanted. 
You could even use like a stain on them. I started to do that. I think that's what they did with the ones that I saw in the antique store. I think they had used a stain on them. But that's what we're getting so far. It has a little texture, it's just not over the top with texture, okay? I'm loving that. Now, some, most of the time I go ahead and paint my molds at the same time. Um, I think with this one, I'm going to paint this first and then I'm going to see about the wax and then if I want to do anything else, um, then we'll see. I'm just going to paint around this top. Now, once you put this Finnabar wax on, it, you're really not gonna be able to put any acrylic paint over it. And I think I wanna paint down in here just a little bit in case some of my um, whatever floral or greenery I put in here, I want it to look consistent down in through there so I'm going to paint it a little ways down in there all right we have this one done now I'm going to switch to this one I really, I've said this so many times, but with this brush, you use so le much less paint. I have not applied any more paint than what I did originally, and I almost have both of these painted. Okay, I'm going to have to put a little more so I can get down inside. But other than that, this covered everything. <laughs> I love it. Okay, now I'm going to be taking some metallic chocolate brown folk art paint. Doesn't really take a lot. I just wanna start warming this up and I've got this old brush that I love for dry brushing. And I'm just gonna start Coming down here lightly. And I don't know if you can tell, but it's adding a little bit of life to this. It's not so flat, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. putting more on it and I like it. I hope you can see the dimension that it's giving it. I'm gonna get it around these tops. Make sure I get at the bottom. Then I'm going to do it to the taller one and we'll probably add some other colors. Just doesn't look so flat. To me, it was a little too flat and I didn't like it like that.
but it's just whatever you like. As long as you like it, that's the only thing that matters. I think I'll hit those edges just a little bit on that wood. Then I'll go on the top here because I want it to have that same effect. Then I think I'm going to take this royal gold from Folk Art. It's metallic as well. Okay. Do the same thing. Not even going to clean my brush or change my brush. Now let's just go down through here a little bit. We're just adding interest to this, I think. Can just see this with a really pretty stain. I think these would have been gorgeous. But I'm liking this. I think it's really starting to take on a life of its own. Like I said, you could totally make them any color that you wanted. sort of old and weathered and I'm coming from the bottom that really gives that bottom a good effect see I love that effect down through there it's very subtle I mean it's not in your face but I think that's going to add to the uniqueness Hope you can see that. I'm loving these. These are turning out so pretty. And I'm gonna come down these edges. You wouldn't even have to use molds on these if you didn't want to. I would hate to see how much something like this would cost if you would see it out. Okay, I hope this is coming across. This is what we have so far I think it is really pretty all right and then here's the smaller one it's kind of hard to see but it's just very subtle all right so now what I want to do is get my IOD molds in classic elements and like I said, you could stop here if you wanted and you would be good to go. Okay, I'm going to get my cornstarch and I've got my classic elements molds. And I'm going to be using this little trimming right there. So definitely use your cornstarch if you want it to release easy. Um, because if not, it can be a pain. Okay. All right, then we're just gonna knock this out like you're flouring a pan. And I'm going back with my IOD clay. Earlier, I put it in the mold and I didn't put the cornstarch. <laughs> so that was not an easy thing. So please, please make sure you use your cornstarch. Okay, and I know I have way too much clay, but that's okay. My mold's still a little wet. I tried to dry it, but it's kind of hard to get it out of some of those areas. Okay. I'm going to flip this over. Put some tight bond on it. I always just do it with my fingers. Make sure you get it to the ends. Now I want to take this 
and apply it right under here and I'm just going to start wrapping it around there. These are so customizable. You can do whatever you want to with this stuff. I love it. And we'll just prep. I'm going to clean some of that excess glue off. Press this on there. Just press it down good. I kind of flattened that one, but that's okay. And this is what we're getting so far. I think that is going to be adorable. So I know you've seen me do this so much. I'm going to go ahead and put this around the top of both of these. And then when I go to the next step, I'll be Okay, I'll show you on this one. It might be easier to see. I've put that all the way around the top. All right. And I did it on this one as well. Now I want to take this element right here. I think I want to put that one on there. And I'm just going to, now when you, if you do this, your fingers, if you get the glue on there, it will kind of look like that, but I don't really mind it because it kind of looks old. <laughs> so that was a good little thing. All right, then we're gonna put this on here. I kind of wish I'd used a thicker rim, like maybe off of my trimmings to mold that rope. But I didn't think about it. But once we put our wax on that, I think it's going to really look good. And this will allow it to get a little bit of skin to it. Just make sure you press it down good. We're just going to start pressing in here. And then this just pops right out. <laughs> I still love this. Oh my gosh. All right. See how much room we have. I don't even know if I'll have room for everything that I have planned on putting on here. I know I will on the big one because it's much longer, but that's the smaller one. I may have to do a scaled down version of my plan for the bigger one. Okay. okay, I'm going to get these little rollers and I'm just going to put this right under this one to keep it up off of, let me make sure you can see, keep it up off of what I've already put on there. And I'm going to put this right here. Just press it down really well. And that's what we're getting so far. I think that's going to be so adorable. Just make sure you press your edges down really well and you don't um, mess your design up, okay? And you can measure, I always just eyeball. Okay, on this one, since it's smaller, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on, I think all four sides. Let me just see what it would look like with just on that back side. Okay, and then I'm going to Oh, you can measure I never do. Got him pretty close. <laughs> okay, that's what we're getting so far. I think I'll just put it on the front 
and the back. You, you definitely could put it on all sides. I think I'm only going to do that, okay? Then let me see what I want to do on the bottom here. Down on the bigger one, I'm going to be doing another element on there because it's just so large. on here I'm going to put this about right here this tall one I want to do the same thing but I'm going to have a lot more room except I'm going to add an element That, this is what we're getting so far. Now you could just leave this like this. I think that would be pretty, but I'm going to put this on the top. Okay, here this is like this the taller one and then here it is on the back and then here's the shorter one I could and may later put like some maybe half of this mold in here I don't know I haven't decided all right and that's so this has a little bit of skin on it but I'm going to start with this smaller one since I did it first okay and I have this Finnabar metallic wax in aged brass, okay? And I have a lot of uh, other colors. I need to get a um, good, like, wax brush. This is like one I got from Plaid a long time ago. I think it's really a stencil brush. So I might not use that. I might use something else. Who knows? Let's see. So, I'm going to puncture that. Now, this only takes a very little bit. And you're supposed to squeeze from the bottom. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to get in here. Put it in my brush really well. Let's see what we think of this. Like I said, this is a stencil brush. You can use your fingers to apply this if you want. This is the effect it's giving us. I'll probably go back in with my fingers a little more. I'm going to get it underneath. I don't think this is the correct brush to have with this. I think I would be much happier if I had a different brush. But I don't. Okay. There you go. I'll probably take my fingers in a minute after I get more of this on and this can go right on this wood to 
this is what we're getting so far. I hope you can tell that it is giving it some color. I really probably should have painted this mold first and then just put this over. I think that's so cute. I really do like that. You can put as much or as little on it as you want. Definitely highlights those molds, it makes them pop. And you can mix colors of this Finnabar wax. You give them like maybe 10 minutes to dry and then you can go in with another color. I think that's really pretty, okay? So we have that. We're recommending using the other type bond. I just noticed that that's uh, like a thicker consistency. This is holding it. It's just it's it's taking it a while to really set up. So I'm going to order some more tight bond from Amazon. I have it linked in my description in my Amazon storefront. And like I said, you definitely need a better brush than a stencil brush. <laughs> to really get in here and and pop it, but I think it's it's turning out very nicely, um, even with a stencil brush. I think it's adding a lot of dimension. You can see, I really love this effect. Well, here they are. I'll start with the taller one. I just put some olive branches in from Walmart. I love these things. They're very inexpensive. And I'll show you up close. I love that with that Finnabar wax. Like I said, I could have painted this to match this or another color, but it didn't bother me at all that it's like it is. And I also just put some Finnabar wax on this wood. But like I said, if I were you, I would get a different tight bond to adhere this to wood because I think the, uh, the one with the blue, the triple thick or something like that would work much better. And then here's the shorter one. Look at this. So adorable. And like I said, I might put something in there and then again, I may not. And I'll just turn it around. Isn't that adorable? If you would see that out at Hobby Lobby, I know I say this all the time, or Michael's, let me try to scoot them up a little. You would pay so much for this. They are adorable and so easy to do. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out on YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you would subscribe and become a member of our family. And if you subscribe, hit that notification bell and set it to all so you won't miss an upload. So like I said, I will see you, well first, I'll see you Monday for a Cricut DIY. Not exactly sure what yet. Then Tuesday, we're going to do our Dollar Tree Fairy Garden. A lot of you have been waiting for this and it was a request, so I'm going to do it. And so let me go get Maggie and let her say hi to you. Well, here is the baby. She said, I was so comfy, Mama. I was right in there in my blankets. And anytime she lays anywhere, the head has to be elevated. She will fix the pillows so it's elevated or she will get her head and rest it on 
or like our knee so that it will be up. She is so funny. Oh, I love you. You gonna say hi, baby? Say hello. Say I love you. Yes. So let's see how this looks just sitting around. I don't know where I'm gonna put it. <sighs> I'll be right back. Okay, for now, this is where this is going because I made them so large. They're just too large for my mantle, but I love them. They're so pretty. Just look at that. That takes that wood and gives it such a high-end look. And you can see where I put the wax on the wood as well and I love those olive branches from Walmart so pretty but it gives such a it's still French country still Tuscan I think that would even fit in modern farmhouse so until next time bye guys